Anyway, you guys are my heroes. You really are. Um, this is the third day of DevOps. It's um, uh, you know three, uh, what, three o'clock in the afternoon, and I've been to an, a bunch of these conferences with programming, and and uh, you know you've been you got a whole bag of swag behind you, and you're exhausted. You came all the way up to the fourth floor to, from for this presentation, and uh, so um, I, you really are my heroes. And I don't know if I would have made it up for my own session because you know I'm tired, and I've practiced this session like ten times, so. You know, I know what's in it, so I don't need to go to it, right? But, uh, but I thank you all for coming. It's a, it's a really awesome uh, group, and we've got a couple more coming. And that's so, so, so cool. Uh, my voice is kind of coming and going, so I'm so happy for the, for the mic. Thank you, uh, you know, tech guys. I appreciate that very much. So hopefully we can keep my voice up so you can understand and uh, what's going on. So let's get started. All right, so who am I? I'm, uh, my name is Dana Dill. I am the um, uh, software development manager for, at Huge Games. And uh, uh, we're a mobile game company, and we're going to get into that a little bit more a little bit later. And um, I am from the United States. I, uh, I moved here eight years ago um, to Warsaw. I now live in Warsaw. I've been here for eight years. Uh, my, my background is uh, software development. I've um, uh, I go mostly use the Microsoft stack, so don't don't throw anything at me here. I know we got a lot of Java programmers out here. I have done some Java programming, uh, but I'm a passionate programmer. I've uh, I've written games myself in the past. I've worked at certain uh, different types of IPs. I've worked in uh, in a lot of in the health industry and, and, and things like this. Um, I, again, I moved here eight years ago. Um, why did I move here? Uh, well, I, I married my wife here, so uh, I met a wonderful lady, and uh, we moved here and. I moved here to be with her, and we got married last year. And, and I love Poland. It's great. I, I've been to Krakow many times. This is a beautiful. I was just sitting here admiring the, the city. It's just, this is a great location for the conference. And, and on, anyway, I'm so glad you're, you're here. All right, what we're going to talk about today um, is um, mobile gaming and, and, and some gaming in general and how it can help with your mental health. Uh, some of the things we're going to go over and try to cover is exactly who's playing games today. Um, we're going to talk about some of the positive and both the negative, because we can't talk about all the positive things mobile gaming does, or gaming in general, uh, without talking a little bit about the negative parts of it and the things that, that, that are involved with there. We're going to talk about gaming and depression, as that is uh, one of the negative parts of it, and um, kind of dive into that a little bit and, and kind of maybe hopefully educate ourselves a little bit more about that. Um, then we're going to talk about the positive effects of mobile gaming specifically, and I'm uh, going to go break that out. One of the big parts of huge games and a part of one of the big positive elements of mobile gaming uh, is the social gaming. And so we're going to spend a little bit of time on talking about social gaming, how it impacts your mental health, how it can enhance your mental health, and, and, and things like this. Um, and then we're going to wrap it all up and uh, apply it to the daily programmers live and non-programmer, uh, for those of you in here who aren't programmers. But uh, being a programmer myself, I'm a little sensitive to this. Uh, I know exactly how, how that day-to-day -day grind is, and, and I'm going to show you the, some of the things we talk about, how to apply them to your everyday working lives, and, and uh, hopefully you'll be surprised and can take in some of these things. And then finally, if you're still here and haven't laughed by this time, uh, I've got a little special bonus for you. Uh, you'll unlock the achievement. I'm not going to tell you anything about it, but I'm going to share some, uh, some secret information at the very end if you can hang in there that long. So. Appreciate that. Okay, so who are actually playing games, right? Well, actually, everybody is a player in some form or fashion. Um, and statistically speaking, uh, over the last eight years, uh, there's been a player growth of over 5.6%. Uh, um, next year, nearly 3 billion people will be playing games. And of those 3 billion people, um, as you can see, 2.5 billion of those are actually playing some form of mobile game. Uh, everybody seems to play it, myself included. I, I'm a big, avid World of Warcraft fan, you know, and I love, I, I go home tonight and, well, probably tomorrow because I'll be exhausted, and I'll play some World of Warcraft this weekend. I'll play some Hearthstone this weekend. But I always, always have mobile games that I'm playing. I'm, uh, my wife and I, we play um, a game called Heyday, you know, when we uh, 
come and participate that in a weekly, weekly manner. So I think most of us here are playing some form of a mobile game. A um, uh, little less than a billion of those people are playing console games. And, uh, and I'm a big PC gamer because I'm kind of I'm kind of old, so we do that too. Uh, play, you know, one, over 1.3 billion are playing PC games. Why do we play games? Um, that's a good question. Well, for one thing we do is we break away from reality. Uh, gaming helps to, us to emerge, uh, engage ourselves, and to to um, to get something back from the game. We we, we pour time into it, we get it back. Um, we also we love victory. Uh, games have a progression whether or not you're on a quest or whether you're doing a puzzle, from start to finish, you, you can claim a victory. And, and I love to win in games. And, uh, and it's so much fun. You love to win games. I know you do. And so it keeps us back. It keeps us engaged and brings us back to those games. Uh, and we're not alone. The big social part of it. Over 70% of players either play with a friend online or play with a group of people online. So gaming has turned into very social, especially with, uh, with the COVID pandemic over the last two years has really boosted the social aspect of games, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later. All right, so let's kind of take a few moments and let's talk about some of the negative effects uh, of gaming uh, and mobile gaming and gaming in general. Uh, first of all, they're addictive, and some of these are really obvious. You know, this isn't rocket science, but, um, but some, it's good to remind ourselves exactly some of these pitfalls of, of gaming in general. One, again, they're addictive. Um, some of the things you can lose touch with your family. We just get so absorbed uh, in, in a particular game that we're doing. Maybe something new game's been released, and uh, we're deeply involved with that. I know when World of Warcraft came out, you know, a billion years ago, um, people would actually lose their jobs. They couldn't even go to work. Uh, you know, it just it was totally immersion in that. Um, so it became very, very addictive. Um, they can be. They can cause aggression, um, and then part of that is frustration. I know we've all played games and we've either lose, um, we got down to the end. I know uh, I find most of my frustration in card games because I, I love card games and again, specifically Hearthstone. And uh, I have had rage quit moments many, many times on this and I've maybe damaged a keyboard or two in the process. So, and I know you guys have too, because I see it, you know, I see it on YouTube and I, and I talk to you. Um, so rage quitting is a thing. One thing I do want to mention though that does come up a lot is that um, you know, it doesn't cause social violence. Uh, there was a big push back, you know, maybe 20 years ago when um, there was a, uh, a lot of association thought of that maybe violence video games would actually uh, cause violence in real social life. And numerous studies have been done on this and it's been debunked. And, um, and so we just want to keep in mind that just a reminder about that. Um, one of the downfalls also is that they're not part of real life. Uh, one of the, that's actually one of the positives as well. But one of the negatives is that some people just just totally immerse themselves and can't remove themselves from that. And those are those types of people that can be a very negative effect for them and can really be very destructive in their lives. And um, and lastly, uh, they can cause depression. Uh, and I want to kind of focus a little bit for a few moments on depression uh, and how you know how exactly what it is and and the things that uh, that we can do. And they actually show you how gaming is helping with depression and overcoming depression. So um, mental health issues, they actually are very, very common. Uh, we don't necessarily think of ourselves having mental issues, but they are very common. Some of the common ones are, and you may have these. I have some of these. I've had them in the past. Uh, sleep disorders, uh, addictions, uh, you know, anxiety disorders, and depression itself. Uh, these are common you know, mental disorders. Some of them are the common ones that maybe you've heard of before are like bipolar disorders, uh, personality disorders, schizophrenia. Uh, are some of the, the ones, and it's quite statistically proven that you know 50% of people at this current time are dealing with some kind of mental disorder. So you know, you think about this room. You know, half of you are probably it could be sleep, and you know, have a problem with sleeping, or some of these other ones I've mentioned. Uh, but it's a very, very, very common issue, and it's something that that everybody deals with in their life at some point. Um, uh, mental health issues, they're not moods. Uh, it's, it's important to realize that, that moods are things like happiness, <clears throat> sadness, anger, um, you know, being fearful. Uh, you know, these kinds of things are temporary triggers that are usually triggered by an event. Um, you know, your, your pet died or, you know, um, or something happened at work or something, anybody in your family, something happens. These are, these are effects or on the, on the flip side, you know, happiness uh, or other types of emotions. These are types of emotions. 
Um, so they're not typically mental health issues. Um, issues like depression and anxiety disorders, they're actually diseases. They're clinically proven diseases. They're biological diseases. Um, and they're actually uh, things that should definitely be treated, like you would have a cut on your arm or, or you have the flu or, you know, or some kind of ailments. It's, a, it's, a, it's something that really needs to be treated, and we're going to get into that in a moment as well. <clears throat> So what are the chances of going through your life without having any kind of mental disorders? And the answer to that would be pretty much zero. It's, uh, it's like trying to go through life and not getting a common cold. And, and judging by the age group in this room, we've all had these already, and uh, including myself. Um, <clears throat> one thing I'd like to uh, uh, share is that it's not shameful, uh, and it's not embarrassing to have a, a kind of a social disorder, and I'll use myself as an example. Uh, before I moved here, I was living in Cincinnati, Ohio. I was working for an insurance company, and uh, I was managing, managing a team of developers there. And, uh, and I was really struggling at the time if I should come to Poland or not, you know. Uh, and, and my job was stressful, and there was a lot of going on in my life at that time. And I really, I didn't know what to do. So uh, there was a program that my company offered that I had actually could can um, get some counseling or things like that. I was embarrassed. I was, you know, I'm a strong guy, proud, and you know, didn't, you know, I, I can handle anything on my own. And but I did. I went secretly and talked to the health counselor, and she set me up with a uh, somebody to go see. So I sneakily went off and uh, I met with this this lady counselor, and and she was great. <clears throat> we went into this you know beautiful office, sat on the couch. And, uh, and she just she asked me a few questions and had a big notebook, and uh, I just started talking. Uh, and I talked, and I talked, and we did 10 sessions like this, like for one hour each. <clears throat> and after a few sessions, uh, actually after, after the first one, I felt much, much better. I don't know what she was writing about. She could have been drawing funny pictures of me. I, I have no idea. She never would share that with me. That made me always wonder, what are you writing about me? Um, but, but what happened was that it really helped me to, to deal with it. It was... Um, it was, uh, it, was a, it was a, you know, it was a mental disorder. It was, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't depression, and it didn't need to be medically, you know, d you know um, take any pills or anything for that. So, but it was really encouraging to me. So I encourage you, if, if, if you have anything like this, um, you know, it's good to go talk to somebody. It, it's not embarrassing. Um, again, pro getting professional help does not mean, you know, getting medication. It, it's not always needed. Like in my case, it wasn't needed, and in most cases, it's not needed. Um, even if you do need medications, it's good to know that today's medications are very safe. And uh, they're very safe to take. And I know there's a kind of a perception that people who take medication for, for mental disorders are kind of like zombies walking around. And, and uh, it's great for video games, too. Um, but that's, that's actually not the case. The advances in medication today are, are uh, incredible. And they can, people can just lead regular, normal, everyday lives. Um, depression itself, though, uh, is a more serious topic. And um, it affects 5% of society. And the reason why it's more of a serious topic is because of the mortality rate of depression. And we all have read in the news about famous people who have either committed suicide or something like this uh, because of depression. And, uh, and so there's a, if you are depressed, it, it's, there's, there's a very high chance of the mortality rate being there. Um, so, so what is depression a little bit? Let's talk a little bit more about specifically about depression. Uh, depression is not sadness. Uh, being sad is, is, a, is an emotion. Depressed people are typically um, people who feel anger or are unable to feel happiness or they have indifference, uh, you know, exhaustion, and all kinds of sorts of things like this. Um, it's very common in depression uh, uh, to have cognitive function impairment. A little later on the positive aspects of gaming, we're going to talk about cognitive functioning because it's one of the greatest positive things about it. Uh, but depression usually brings those, those mechanical skills are, are difficult to do. Uh, it's difficult with memory. Uh, you know, your everyday work day, you can't do tasks, you can't make decisions. Uh, these can be all symptoms or signs that you have depression. Um, what is important, though, is to understand that your state of depression is different from actually who you are. Uh, you know, just because, uh, you know, if you're depressed, it, it's a whole different you. And so who you are to get help and to get healing from this depression kind of can reveal back to who you really are. But it's really important, since it is a biological disease, there can be effects of it if, you, if it goes long term. There's actually physical, chemical changes that can happen to your body. So if you do have some symptoms of these and you're concerned about it, 
you know, don't be embarrassed to go seek a healthcare professional. They can give you, you know, maybe some, some obviously some advice and can push you along in, in the direction that you need to go and get the help you need to get um, so you can move on. Okay, so we've covered that. Um, and so, ironically, games are actually being used to help fight depression in many, many ways. And some of the examples of those is as we're building awareness. We need to build awareness, and, and there's certain games, and there's actually more coming out um, by the year, it seems, um, to help focus on mental illnesses and depression specifically and how they can be used as therapy. There's also movies that build awareness for this kind of things. Um, and then there's many clinical studies that have been done. These are some of the articles and clinical studies um, that have shown that, that how the effects of gaming um, can actually over help you overcome depression. And specifically, which was really interesting to me, uh, was this study that was done that 66% um, uh, of, of gamer groups uh, reported a 30 or more reduction in symptoms compared to like 58% of conventional methods. And what that basically means is that the treatments being used through gaming are actually better than the treatments that uh, are getting better results than some of the conventional treatments that are being done. Uh, but even more importantly um, is the uh, remission states of treatments that use gaming uh, actually have a much higher percentage of kind of sticking, you know, and so they don't fall back into depression. And, and these are early studies, you know, you know gaming uh, being used for depression is still kind of early in its infant stages. Uh, as we develop and get more, um, more of these games, uh, I really, this is really actually very encouraging, very exciting. Okay. Get that one out of the way. So now, onto the positive effects. All these great things you can take home and, and be all psyched about, and you can tell your spouses and everything else that I gotta play more games because it's more positive, and that's why we're here, right? Right. So what, what kind of positive improvements can we get from mobile gaming? Um, the big one is cognitive skills. Um, you know, and, and these are several examples. Uh, playing action video games can improve your reaction time. Some of these are obvious for you guys. I know you guys play some of these games. Uh, First-person shooters can improve your mental flexibility uh, for, you know, be, for all of the decisions you have to make, switching between different tasks and things like this. Uh, playing action games can improve your visual capacity and, and spatial abilities there, as well as playing 3D games. Uh, video games can improve your multitasking and can increase your attention cap capability. Um, and then it can also play, improve your visual, uh, excuse me, visual to audio attention kind of shifting. In other words, you can talk and do things at the same time uh, much, 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 much quicker, much easier. So these are all things that uh, cognitive improvements that you can get from, from playing video games and mobile games. Uh, some of the more practical ones, maybe. Uh, it improves your mood. Uh, and I know this is true because it affects me. Uh, I go home and I love to play video games. And uh, I get a great feeling of victory. You know, when we have raid nights or something like this, or you know, I'm a very competitive person when I play, but I don't play PvP. It's kind of weird, but I, I'm very competitive. Uh, I like to play, uh, crank, you know, climb the ladders in certain you know card games like Ice Hearthstone, um, and uh, so so I get a lot of satisfaction. Uh, my mood changes. It gets very positive whenever I play these games. Uh, and specifically to mobile games, um, I know with our huge casino games, I, I'm a part of a group and a club, and when we can climb the ladder for these things, uh, it's very rewarding. Uh, my mood immediately changes. And it's funny, because my wife is, when I'm playing Hearthstone, for example, I come into the room and she'll say something to me, and she knows immediately if I'm winning or losing based on my mood, you know, and, uh, um, you, know, uh, you know, I'd like to say I win all the time, but unfortunately I don't. Uh, but, uh, but when it is good, the victory is awesome. Uh, games can also help you with anxiety. It helps you to release the stress and, and kind of escape a little bit into that world of um, relaxation. Uh, it's definitely something that I do and, and we can do. Um, they train our brain at all times. They're always training our brain, kind of like the cognitive part of it, but we're always learning things as we do games, um, uh, depending on what the game is, but there's always some kind of spatial awareness and reinforcement or some, some kinds of things like this. One of the great things about it, games is that they're ageless. Uh, and, and I'm a big uh, Twitch watcher, so I know how many Twitch watchers we get out here. Yeah, we've got quite a few of them. Uh, and I, I didn't think that would be something I'd ever be interested in. But then I started watching 
uh, some of the games that I was interested in. And uh, I was like, wow, this is really interesting. And what led me to that was like the esports you know, phenomena, which has been around for quite some time. And being competitive, being a big sports nut, uh, watching these, these young people uh, play these games, you know, like uh, League of Legends and, and, and things like It's amazing what they can do, you know, things I could never dream of. And then maybe I was that good back when they had Pac-Man when I was a kid. I don't know. But, uh, but today they even do that better. It's, it's, it's amazing what they can do. But on the flip side of that, um, you know, us older guys, you know, um, or, or middle-aged guys, uh, we actually um, can learn a lot as well. Uh, and, and uh, you know, actually 50% of all gamers, hold on, sorry about that. All right, am I still there? Okay, here we go. Good. Um, Fifty percent of, of gamers actually are fifty and above, which is really kind of interesting. And um, the the smallest group of gamers uh, is actually um, from thirty five to like forty eight, which is as we know when all the parents have kids, right? And so uh, and, and I have three kids of my own, and during those years it was very difficult. Um, but anyway, it, it is ageless. Uh, role play games, card games, casino games, you know, puzzle games. I know personally from my own experience. Uh, as I get up a little bit older in life, that um, I'll, I pay attention to a lot of studies for you know mental illnesses, about uh, disorders um, you know, that can happen as you get older. And um, one of the things that have been proven to help that is to play challenging games. And that's why you see so many older people playing games, uh, because it, it really, really helps us. So when I play games, I ask why I like card games so much. It challenges my brain. And I'm not as smart as some of the younger ones, but I try to plug along. Uh, so that's very important, uh, that, that at any age you can be playing these games. <clears throat> Excuse me. They enhance our well-being. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about it being a negative thing to be able to remove yourself into a game. Well, it, there's also a very big positive part of that, where we can actually can get back into uh, a, an alternate reality. And I like role-playing games, and I, I love you know, going home from work and, and just d diving into something, a different world, a different adventure, uh, you know, with my friends or with something like this. Um, so video games, mobile games, they really enhance this. Um, games with clock management. This is kind of interesting because um, I don't like down games because I, there's too much pressure. You know, I have enough pressure in real life. But actually, it's been proving statistically that uh, using clock management games um, uh, actually really help your mental health and, uh, and stimulate those things in your mind that, that are very important for that. Uh, and now it's also important that companies these days are actually developing games to, to, um, to, with the knowledge of actually mental health. Uh, and they can design games. They, they're using some 3D games for educational games and some other games to help uh, to promote mental health as they, people develop. And lastly, um, which is really uh, an important part of what well, we do at HUGE, and also uh, me personally, is we bring, games bring people together. Uh, back when I started playing games, there was no internet, believe it or not. Well, there was, but it was like in the military, I think. Um, so, uh, so things were very, very one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, how many of you here remember playing LAN games, you know? Uh, yeah, there you go. Awesome. There you go. You know, they all we go out somewhere or somebody's house and would hook up our land. Uh, that was me. But today we have the internet. Today we have mobile games, mobile access. We we have the whole cloud platform, which which you've been hear, hearing so much about this weekend, and uh, the ways to interact with that and how we can can share all that we experience that we do. So bringing people together is is incredibly important. And so let's talk about that. Um, Huge's game tag is play together. Uh, we have a culture at Huge uh, where of togetherness, of team. Uh, our whole principle behind all of our games is to get people to play together, family members, friends. And all of our games, when we design them, are focused upon this element. And even internally, when we do things, we, we focus on that. So, so it's a big part of who we are, and it's a big part of, of gaming in general. Uh, Two-thirds of the top 50 games have at least one social aspect to them, and in many, many cases, they have many, many more. Uh, the current, currently, social features like PvP play uh, are some of the hottest trends in the industry, and we know that from League of Legends. We know this from um, uh, you know, a lot of the MOBA games and competitiveness in esports, and uh, it's really, really highly competitive. Um, there are guilds and clubs in games, I mean, even even popular games like Candy Crush recognize the fact that that you need gills because this brings people together. Uh, Huge Casino, which is uh, the games that I work on and develop, um, we have a whole focus on on, on gills. We use clubs, and we have 
all kinds of ways to interact and make it social. When you, when you log into our game and you start playing, there's people around you instantly. And, uh, and it's really cool. Um, of course, COVID was a big proponent to enhance social gaming. Uh, before COVID, it was a big part of it anyway. But of course, over the last two years, we've all been locked up and uh, unfortunately been able to get out. And uh, I'm so thankful we can have a conference like this to get out and meet and mingle again. Um, so, but it really promoted the fact that, that we can do uh, you know, for social gaming. And it's really, really, really kind of cool. Some of the effects of bringing these people together and having social gaming is uh, it creates a sense of completion. Uh, and it's kind of self-explanatory. When you're doing things together, if, you're, if you do play an MMO, for example, don't want multi, multi online game. <laughs> that was a brain cramp there. Um, then like World of Warcraft or things like this, uh, you know, completing a quest together uh, are, are very encouraging or very fun. It's a sense of completion. Um, the feeling of being a part of a group in the same, in the same regard. Uh, motiv motivate players to remain more active. Uh, the effect. So uh, we all know that a lot of mobile games always give you a reward if you log in the next day, right? Uh, I don't even know of a mobile game I can think of that doesn't give you a reward if you log in the next day. And uh, you know, so it just motivates you to remain active, to keep going, to be competitive. Um, uh, so, which, which, which is kind of cool. Uh, and it boosts the game's market, marketability. And by that, I mean it actually, um, if you have a favorite game, uh, and the more you play, the more you get your friends to play, the more revenue that company can have to continue making your game. So, if, if it's a game maybe that's not quite so popular, um, get your friends to play, you know, promote it, uh, and, and it can help the company and boost its own marketability. <clears throat> All right, 12 social features in mobile gaming. So these are 12 things. Some of these are really obvious. Some of the things maybe not quite so obvious um, that are a part of uh, all mobile games. All right, game, uh, game chatting, obviously, is uh, uh, you know, in-game chats, either with texting or audio. Our own game has, has its own version of in-game chatting. It's made easy because it's mobile, either with, with, um, with, with icons and funny, funny symbols, or you can actually write real text. Uh, but this is one part of the social gaming. Social media connection through, through things like Facebook and, and, and uh, you know, Discord and things like this. Um, uh, you, you, you can't be a part of a group, it seems, this day, these days, if, or a guild, or, uh, without having a Facebook page or without having a social, uh, having a Discord page. I know the, the farm game I play, you know, one of the requirements, you had to sign up with a Facebook page, you know, and be able to chat there and, and share things there. And, and I literally think every game guild, and uh, I've tried to be a part of it, World of Warcraft, has always has a Discord page. Uh, so you can share, and of course within those you have a visual uh, aspect of it as well, where you can talk, show me uh, an audio part that you can talk and work things together. Uh, one of the things I like to do is to, uh, you know, you can ask for help with inside of games. Uh, if I'm a new player, uh, I can get instant help, which is really, really cool. Some games are really promoting that, like Final Fantasy, where you get a little icon over your head if you're a newbie. Uh, a little, uh, I think it's a little leaf or something like that. Other games are doing this as well. And on the flip side of that, if you're a veteran, um, they also give you certain icons or privileges of being a veteran, so you can help out younger players. And gaming companies understand the fact that, that to get more gamers to play, you want to feel comfortable, you want to be happy, you want to have a fun time. That's the whole reason you're playing the game. So if you have people who can help you out along the way who are veterans and they want to help, when many of them do, um, they give opportunities and incentives to do that. Uh, I know personally, I, I love helping a new person come in and throw them some gold or throw them some new bags or something you know, that's relatable to whatever they're, they're applying for. Uh, and even a veteran like myself, I created a new character a, a while ago and, and somebody from another guild came in and gave me a bunch of free stuff to get me started. So th this is kind of really important. Leaderboards, I love leaderboards. It's my weakness. So competitive. Uh, you know, when I'm when I'm playing Hearthstone or playing, uh, you know, even like our, a huge casino game, uh, I'm constantly looking at this thing. It's fiction. <laughs> I uh, uh, like to compete against other players, among other other teams. I like to climb the ladder. I think it's the coolest thing invented, and I'm not sure it's the most healthy thing invented. Invented, but it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, of course, guilds, and we have clubs in our games that we talk about. Um, they're, they're, they're almost essential almost in getting through most many games today, and they're a lot of fun to be in uh, if you get in with the right one. And uh, I know there's drama out there, uh, but uh, I think in most cases we, we have a lot of fun with our guilds and our, our teams. 
Uh, Co-op play uh, and PvP play. It seems like you cannot put a game out today, and you can ask Blizzard this, for example, without co-op play, and, uh, which is cool. Uh, and you, know, you want to, my wife and I, we love to play together in a co-op mode where we can, we can go through a dungeon together, for example, and, and kill things up. She's, she's the warrior. She likes to wear a big axe. I'm the, I'm the DPS healer. I like to stay away from all that blood and action. And uh, so we do things together. It's a lot of fun. And uh, we have different playing styles, so it works for us. Um, so that's, that's a lot of PvP, of course. Uh, I, I, maybe I'm just, I don't like being cut up by somebody or being, a, being beaten. It's funny because I like Hearthstone, and that's PvP, I guess. And, uh, but in other realms, I don't like PvP. But it's huge, and it's, it's something that is uh, extremely popular. And uh, if you get really into it and get really good at it, it it's quite rewarding. Uh, social currency. Uh, there are mobile games today that uh, are promoting, like, maybe hearts or a certain kind of you know, object that can be promoted by um, a social currency. And with this social currency, you can trade it in for something, maybe, maybe game time or some kind of, you know, cosmetic or things, things like this. And uh, we all like cosmetics. I know we all complain about them, but we like cosmetics. I know we do. Uh, all right. Some things that are outside the games, uh, social games, that bring people together. Um, again, I've already mentioned these before. Uh, you, know, you know, Twitch is, 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 I think, is really cool. I always have Twitch running in the background, it seems like. Uh, YouTube, YouTube streaming, of course, uh, as well. Some of my favorite streamers are on YouTube, and they promote many you know, nice videos and things like this. And, of course, spectator modes uh, inside of games, uh, getting more and more popular. Uh, a lot of card games are, do this already, where you can kind of watch your opponent or, you know, or can... You know, separate yourself and watch them in spectator modes. Of course, we love push notifications, don't we? I know you guys do. I know it. It's a secret. When you get that phone ringing and those, those push notifications, um, uh, it's, it's a great way to, 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 to notify you of things. And one funny story. Um, uh, since I'm in Poland, I, I, I actually learn trying to learn a language here. And every day I use a, um, a mobile app to to try to learn as much Polish as I can. And I've learned quite a bit, you know, and uh, I, you know, I can order a pizza now, and it's just really good, and, and then do more than that. And uh, so, but anyway, um, my wife is, uh, since she's Polish, she kind of knows Polish, and then she's actually better in English than I am, so that didn't work. But so she's learning, uh, um, uh, she's learning Italian. Uh, so, so I didn't even know this. We were playing the game, it's not a game, it's actually an app for learning language. And uh, we we're doing a side by side, and, um, I got this notification one time, you know, came up and says, uh, this player, which my wife has now passed you because she's one of your friends, you need to start playing so you can beat her. You know, and I was like, I'm playing a language. I'm not even playing a game. I didn't have the stress of going back and forth. Uh, but push notifications, it, it, it informed me of this and it continues to inform us. So now we have this little game going back and forth of beating each other and, uh, you know, get these push notifications back and forth. Um, Hangout areas, uh, Discord, you know, is a great place I hang out. I have Discord running most of the time, too. Uh, you know, Facebook, as I mentioned earlier, and Steam is a great platform, obviously, for PC gamers. Steam is the platform, and GOG is also very good. Um, but, you know, the thing about Steam, though, and GOG is that it shows you too much information, right? I mean, your friends, how many hours they're playing, how many hours you're playing, you're proud of those hours. You know, I put in 300 hours into Lost Ark, I'm proud of it. And, uh, you know, but my wife's up 500 hours, and I'm like, oh, and she's got so many achievements unlocked, and, and uh, how'd she unlock that achievement? Oh, I gotta go in and play, you know? So, so this is, a, you know, it, it, it promotes, you know, that external part and gets you more engaged in the game. Uh, shareable achievements and replays. You know, we always wanna share our successes, and we wanna post those. Uh, so this is another big aspect of social gaming. And of course, seeing other people's progress in their activity, like I just mentioned, like for, with Steam, for example. All right, that's a lot of stuff. And I've gone through it kind of quickly. So how are we going to wrap that all up and apply it to your everyday life uh, as a developer? And uh, so let's see if we can do some of that. First of all, it's um, gaming and social gaming and mobile gaming, it improves focus and multitasking. We went over this a little bit with the cognitive pieces of it. Uh, you know, programming is, is incredibly mentally stimulating. It's exhausting, actually. Uh, you can go home and just be, be totally wiped out by doing this. And it, because it requires a high degree of concentration. And we all know this, because we do it every day. Um, so playing games help, helps improve that. Uh, having, having a good attention skills uh, goes a long way to improving your developer productivity and performance at work. And, and we know this as well, you know, when we're focused and we're not in meetings all day, right? Uh, we, we, we can stay focused and, and do these things that we have to do. 
Uh, studies have shown that playing multiple mobile games uh, for at least one hour a day, you're going to love this, one hour a day, uh, can boost your brain activity and improve your focus. So the so job is when you go back, uh, yes, sir. What's that? Only apply to mobile games? Uh, my, uh, yeah, my studies were only for mobile games for one hour, but I'm sure they could apply for anything. Uh, gaming is gaming, right? So, yes, you have a free license for, for saying to your boss that, hey, I need to go play World of Warcraft on my, or my game for an hour because, because yeah, exactly. You know? So this is, this, is a, you know, this is a proven scientific you know, formula. So, so I use it, you know, and uh, you know, so you know, we do it our work, right? Play for an hour, an hour of video games every day. Um, of course, multitasking. Uh, you know, mobile games help ensure you to, you know, prepare to handle more than one task at a time. And again, a lot of these apply to both mobile games and regular gaming, like you said. Secondly, they uh, they help with stress relief. Again, we talk on this a little bit more. So your software development it, again is mentally taxing. It can be high pressured when it comes to the end of a sprint, for example, and you're trying to push out, push that code out. It is very high pressure. Um, uh, so you know, it helps with stress relief and helping you get through that. That's why you need to do it an hour a day. Do it just before your final build of the day, right? <clears throat> The, uh, the immersion and engaging experience of mobile games uh, lets you take a breather and to escape. Uh, some of the difficulties of reality, and, uh, which is really nice. Uh, as we've seen in certain games, it makes it easier to deal with stress, depression, and other mental illnesses. And uh, playing mobile games helps promote thinking out loud, which is kind of an interesting one because, um, you know, I'm not, not talking about yelling at, like, rage quitting like I was, but it, it actually does, because, you know, some of us as developers may be a little bit shy or something, and, um, you know, we don't want to speak out loud in the group. But more importantly, where this really comes into play um, is that when we have a problem, when we, and I, this is one of my weaknesses as a developer, I like to solve a problem, I like to dig into it, and if I'm that close to a solution or an algorithm that's that close to being finished, um, and I, but I've hit a wall, I want to push through and get it, because in my mind, it takes longer to explain it to somebody else than it is for me just to fix it, and we've all been there. Um, but one thing this does promote is speaking out loud, and how many times have you walked down to Bob's office you know, or Peter's office and say, so I say, okay, okay, I've got this problem. And before you can even get it out, it's like, I got the solution. You know? Or we're in the shower with our rubber ducky and we're just like, saying, oh, I got, I got the solution. It always seems like when we start talking about these problems that we can overcome them in the programming world. I know it's happened to me too many times, so many times. It's really great. So mobile gaming and playing games in general help promote that. Thirdly, it sharpens our thinking skills. Uh, you know, programming and video games have a, a lot in common, uh, the way we do things. And it's not unusual because programs are, video games are just programs, right? You know, they're, they're, they're a combination of that. So they both require you know, the following a preset defined you know, rules to get to a solution, just like you would in programming. You know, video games, uh, they force us into thinking around problems, you know, to uh, be creative in our thinking. You know, when we're, you know, not just puzzle games, but you know, all kinds of games. They always present with a problem because that's the fun part of it is overcoming these challenges, which leads directly in how we can help us with our with our programming skills every day. Um, it helps us to get better with our critical thinking. You know, and it requires us. You know, critical thinking is really important in programming. You know, we need to have a critical how we look at our code. You know, how can we make things better? How to make logical decisions uh, in our code? And uh, video games that are designed actually designed to form different levels and the way they're interconnected encourage uh, critical thinking and, and the way that we, we actually develop games applies to how we can help our critical thinking. <clears throat> and fourth and finally, um, it fosters team building and productivity. Uh, this is a really, really, really cool one and fun one and one that we really promote a lot at HUGE. Because uh, you know, game companies invest a lot of time in, in, in events that go outside. Maybe you have an off-team off event or something. Uh, companies spend a lot of time in team building activities. They may have somebody come in and train and do certain exercise. I know in companies I work for, we'd go to escape rooms together. You know, we have to figure things out and get out as a team together. Uh, so this is very important. Um, and of course, playing games is incredibly team oriented. Social games, they play together and solve and overcome things together. Uh, collaborative video games are specifically proven to boost team productivity and morale in the office. Uh, at Huge, for example, we have a huge game room uh, and. Uh, we, in that game room, we have, you know, all the consoles that we can play. Uh, FIFA is a big game that everybody seems to play. We even have tournaments for FIFA in our game, in our, in our company. The, um, uh, we have pool tables. We have foosball tables. 
uh, you know, we, we encourage this collaboration. So people who write code, because we, you know, we work very difficult, very hard. We, all of us work very hard to produce the games that people love to play. So, but it's important to take that time off as a team and work together uh, to, to, you know, have fun together. And it's really important. It creates a sense of trust. You know, if you're, if you're with somebody on a raid and somebody's a healer and one's a tank, and, well, you're trusting them. I mean, you know, if they, and it helps build that kind of trust within the group. Uh, it's very important. Uh, multiplayer games also, uh, uh, you know, allow you to do different roles if you're playing, again, I, I use role-playing as an example. It's great because you always have different roles in certain games. Uh, you think of the MOBAs, you think of uh, League of Legends. Everybody has a role. Which lane are you doing on? Or whatever game you might be playing. Uh, it really builds that um, sense of different roles. And as a team and a developer, we all have certain roles. We all have certain codes that we're specifically good at. We all like to focus on areas and we really lean up on each other and require each other to do, uh, to do our job. Uh, and, the, you know, they keep competitiveness spirit alive, you know, and they, they uh, you know, they promote being competitive. And, and many companies today are actually having ga dedicating gaming areas, not in just gaming companies, but uh, many games outside of that. Uh, I know when I was, before I was working at Huge, there was a couple, couple companies I was applying for, and one of the big features was having a big gaming environment. And in fact, one company, um, I think it was in the Netherlands, uh, and they're not a game company, but their meeting rooms were actually set up as games. So one of them was those, you know, those balls you put your kids in, you throw them into there, and they could go underneath, and, and they pop the heads up. And you know, <clears throat> we had a whole meeting room in that, and we actually had to sit there in those balls and do the, you know, and kind of <laughs> have our serious conversation and things like that. So it's kind of fun because it kind of lightens the mood. It lightens, lightens, allows our creativity to get more engaged and, and things like this. Okay, you made it that far. Congratulations. So now I've, I can, you've unlocked the achievement. I can, I can share with you uh, some exclusive inside information. It's not really exclusive. But what I'm going to do, I did some research, and, and I found five mobile games that are specifically designed to improve your mental health. And so these five games, you can go out and download them and, and see how you think, them now, think about them. And no, they're not doom on your, on, your, on your handheld. It's not those. Uh, it's a little bit more calming and relaxing, but uh, they're a lot of fun, and uh, maybe you'd like to enjoy and try them. So first one <clears throat> is uh, My Oasis. Uh, again, it's a calming game. It's on, uh, I think, Android and, and iOS. Uh, both, uh, you have, a, have, a, have an oasis, and you've got animals coming in. I'm a big animal fan, so I like this kind of thing. You know, and you do certain things for them, and um, it's just calm, calm and relaxing, and it's very good. Uh, secondly is uh, Windowsill, uh, and I didn't get to try this one out, it's, and don't boo me, but I don't, have, uh, I don't have an iPhone, I have an Android only, so um, it could be, yeah, okay, some of these could be, I didn't check that out, thank you very much, um, so, uh, but this is, this is kind of cool, it, it, it's kind of, if you don't want to have any discouragement, this is after, like, I go play Hearthstone, I should come play this, because, you know, I'd, I've lost 10 games in a row, I can need to go to something that's not going to beat me, right? And this is going to be a good, a good solution for that. Um, uh, Rako, Rako Ubeke, I think I pronounced that correctly. Now, this is really cute. I had fun playing with this, because I like sea otters, and, and I love going up to hell uh, in Poland, where they have the, the, I think it's the refuge place for the otters, and I've been there several times. And, uh, and, but this is kind of cute. Uh, it, it's your typical, you know, have an otter, unlock certain otters, feed them, take care of them, you know, and you can get cosmetics for them and buy chairs and put them on the other. It's all kinds of things like that. It's just kind of fun, kind of cute. Um, uh, this is a uh, Viridly. Uh, basically, this is if you like like taking care of plants, uh, taking care of you know organic things like this. Um, you these are virtual plants and, and, uh, that you can take care of, water, take care of, and they never die. Uh, unlike when I have plants, you know, I look at them and they die. This actually will <laughs> actually, uh, you know, the way, and the thing that's, the, they sound kind of silly maybe, or they sound kind of simple, uh, but the way that they interact with you and how you have to do them is actually stimulates certain parts of the brain and the mind to help with mental, uh, you know, uh, your mental ability. So that, that's kind of why. It, 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 they're secretly behind the screen pulling the strings and things like that. And of course, our own game, Traffic Puzzle. And I bring this up because um, three puzzle games are one of the best games for mental, uh, you know, helping your mental illness, helping your mental ability. Uh, you know, that's why Candy Crush, for example, is popular. And Traffic Puzzle is, is, what is our three puzzle game uh, that's popular. And, and I encourage you to go download it and have fun with it. 
Uh, but, but the games like this are great for the mind, it's great for challenging a mind. It, 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 it builds all the things that we talked about in this session and more. And uh, so I encourage you to, to download this, you know, them. I know it's part of our company, but it is a great game. And it's a lot of fun to play. So, <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if you'll have access to this online, but this is a bunch of references of things that, that I actually did my research on this. Uh, so if you wanted to read more about it, you could. And uh, that's all I have. And thank you so much. I, I'm here for questions if you have any. Thank you. Oh, one more thing. Uh, we are hiring at Huge. I'm hiring two Java developers for my team. So if you have any interest at all, come by. Our recruiting staff is the best in the world. And so uh, check them out. Thank you very much.